One of the most common questions I get today from an e-discovery standpoint is how to collect and preserve text messages on a mobile device. It seems like text messaging is becoming more of a primary medium for official, formal, business-centric conversations that may have previously been on paper or email. Text messages provide provides a little bit more back and forth from a conversational aspect more than something like email. My typical recommendation for collecting and preserving text messages involves the use of a computer software called iMazing. I did a video on this a while back that walks you through exactly how this can be useful to basically do a comprehensive collection along with timestamps and everything else. Uh, other times, it's necessary to do a full forensic image of a mobile device to capture all of that information. But there are some times when it may not be feasible to use that iMazing software, or certainly it's too expensive to do a forensic image. So screenshots could be another good way to capture information from your mobile device. But don't stop with just the screenshots. You can use an app like Stitch It to actually stitch those screenshots together so that you have a sort of a, like a long flowing conversation and you can see an image in the entire conversation as opposed to individual screenshots. The best news about using Stitch It is that it works great for text messages, but it can also work for any time that you need to preserve a long flowing method of uh, information, such as a Twitter conversation or from Facebook, for example, or Instagram. The Stitch It app will work great for any of these scenarios. The Stitch It app is free, although I absolutely recommend that you pay the in-app purchase of $2.99. That will actually remove the ads from the app and it opens it up so that you can stitch more than three images together at a time. It's a one-time purchase and well worth it. The first step is to actually create the screenshots that you want to be stitched together. Now on older iPhones that have a home button, to take a screenshot, you're simply going to click the home button and the on off switch at the same time. If you have a newer iPhone that doesn't have a home button, it uses Face ID, you're going to click both the volume up and the side button at the same time, and that creates a screenshot. Now I've got a text message conversation here from my wife who was asking me to get some things from the store. So I pull up my conversation to the first screenshot that I want to take and I'll just hit both of those buttons and you can see on my iPhone 12 here it creates that little screenshot down at the bottom. I can just leave that there or it goes away after a couple of seconds or I can just swipe it off. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm now going to scroll up to the next screenshot that I want to take. Now it doesn't have to be precise here. You're going to see in a moment how you can edit the actual screenshots, but I'm going to take another screenshot here. And the next thing I'm going to do is scroll up to the next series of text messages and I'm going to click both of those buttons to take another screenshot. And then I just rinse and repeat until I have the entire conversation collected here. Another quick bonus tip if you're using an iPhone, if you take your finger and just gently slide the text messages over to the left, you'll see that you can see an actual timestamp that comes up next to those text messages. Now, <laughs> you can capture those in a screenshot, but you're gonna have to use multiple fingers here. I usually use my thumb to scrunch it over a little bit, and then I use my two fingers to create that screenshot. I'll scroll down to the next screenshot that I wanna take, move my text messages over, take a screenshot, and then just keep going until I have all the screenshots that I want to preserve. I don't have to do anything with that because all of those screenshots are getting saved automatically into my Photos app. The next step is to go into the Stitch It app. Now you can see right off the bat, it's, it's a very plain looking app and that's great because it does what it does very well. The next thing to do is to tap the plus symbol down in the bottom right corner. And what that does is bring up my set of photos. Now I typically go into the recents album because that's typically where I'm going to have the last few pictures that I have taken. And then you just simply select the photos that you want to get stitched together. So I know that these were these last several screenshots that I have taken here. 
So I've got a total of seven items selected and I'm gonna tap done in the upper right corner now. I'm back in the Stitch It app and you can see that all of these screenshots are lined up in the order in which I selected them. You can actually delete any of these images that you may not want by tapping the little uh, red minus circle over on the left. You can also rearrange them. There's a little three lines over on the right that you can move these images up and down. But the next step that you're gonna to wanna to do is crop each of these. You don't have to do this but I think this makes for a much more pleasant uh, ultimate result here. You're simply gonna tap into the image that you wanna crop. I'm gonna leave the top uh, intact on this image and at the bottom, I'm just gonna pull this up to where it doesn't actually show my message box there. And then in the upper right corner, there's a little scissors icon. And if I tap that, you can see that it just crops that image exactly the way I wanted it. Now the next one, I don't want the top here. So at the very top on this next image, I'm gonna pull this down to the very top and cut off that top aspect. And what's really neat about the Stitch It app is that it has a transparency here that shows me exactly what it, the first image is gonna look like compared to the second image. And at the bottom here, I'm gonna take off that bottom, tap the little scissor icon, and that one is now stitched as well. So I'm gonna to go to the next one. I'm gonna take off the top. I'm gonna to take off the bottom, hit the scissors icon and go to the next one. And just keep going in here until I actually have just the images that I want snipped. Once you're done cropping all of the images so that it looks kind of exactly the way that you want it, you're gonna tap the stitch it uh, word in the upper right corner. And if you listen really closely, stitch, stitch you'll get an, a little sound here. You can turn these off if you want to, but these are actually sounds made by the actual developer with their own mouth, as they say, and it just makes me smile every time that I hear it. Now the next step here is that you can actually apply redactions. Let's say maybe you've got a phone number in here or something else that you don't want to appear. Uh, a couple of things I would say, first of all, tap the little colored square in the bottom center and you can pick the color that you want for redaction. I typically go uh, black on this just because it looks a little bit more formal, I guess. Make sure that your line is uh, thick enough to actually redact. And so this little slider over here makes the line a little thicker. You can see it getting smaller and thicker as I pull that. So now what I can do is that if I just don't wanna have one of these text messages showing, I'm simply just gonna take my finger and drag it across. Now you really can't get that specific. There's not a whole lot of uh, tools to get very precise. Uh, there is another freehand tool over here if you wanted to do it that way. Uh, either way is fine. Uh, this is just a good way. At, I simply use two fingers to scroll up more. If you wanted to delete something, it's very easy to uh, redact something that you don't want to have redacted. So you can use the undo arrows in the bottom left corner there, and that just takes off the last thing that you had put in there. Once you're done applying all the redactions and all of the edits, you're gonna tap confirm in the upper right corner there. And what that does now, you can see immediately it adds this very long image to my photos roll. You can either go to your photos app or even from here, you can just tap on the share button here so that if you wanna email it to somebody or send it to a different app, you can certainly do that. And you can see it's very easy to just use pinch to zoom and you can go through and look at this entire conversation. The only thing I would add to this is that if you are doing this for purposes of litigation or something that you might want to uh, admit into evidence, just make sure you document when you create this long conversation image. It's just helpful to make sure the date and the time that you created it, what app did you create, when did you take the screenshots, just so that you have a reminder of exactly when and where you did this. This was originally released in 2014, so it's been around a long time, but I am happy to recommend it. Uh, the developer is still continuing to support it. In fact, uh, the most recent update was in October 2021, just a few months ago. So. This is a great app to have. It's very handy uh, to have on your iPhone or the Android device as well for any time that you simply want to create a long flowing image uh, from Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or a text message. This is a good way to make a backup of a conversation maybe that you had with a client or with somebody else and it just saves it into your photo roll. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up.